Hello and welcome to the virtual worship service of Marin Lutheran Church. All of us who are watching this video today have joined together in worship of our God. And we thank you that you are with us today. It is in the church calendar, the ascension of our Lord. And so we hear the stories from both Luke, the Gospel of Luke, and from the book of Acts, the story of when Jesus arose and went into heaven, when after those days of the resurrected Lord, meeting with his disciples, he went up to heaven never again to be seen in the flesh, but now to ex be experienced by everyone. So welcome to our worship. Our service continues with our opening song. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Almighty God, your only Son was taken into the heavens and in your presence intercedes for us. Receive us and our prayers for all the world, and in the end, bring everything into your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
from the book of Acts. Luke writes, in the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, As they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Here ends the reading.
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven, and they worshipped him. And he returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts and minds be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. The last 14 months have been a lesson in the relationship between presence and absence. For years, Sunday mornings have been a time of renewal for me, being in the presence of all of you. Sure, during the week, most of us were absent from one another, but on Sunday mornings, we'd worship together and enjoy one another's company, one another's presence. But since March 22nd, 2020, Sunday mornings have been an interesting experience of both presence and absence. It's wonderful to gather together on Zoom, seeing everyone and talking together, but there's also an absence on Zoom, or at least not the same presence as being in person. Zoom ministry team and council meetings have been an interesting mix as well. There's all the usual roles of in-person collaboration with the various kinds of distracted half-absence we tend to notice instantly. Presence and absence. The Feast of the Ascension commemorates a striking and emotionally emotionally complicated moment when the followers of Jesus experience his absence and, yes, his presence in a new way. The aspect of the story that we often get stuck on is the mechanics of the event, Where did Jesus go? How far and how fast? What exactly did it look like? But Luke doesn't make much fuss about that. Jesus was here. He was taken or lifted up, and he was gone. The focus of the story seems to be much more on the hopes and expectations of the disciples themselves. Is this finally the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? They ask in the Acts version. Well, no. The disciples are to go to Jerusalem and await the coming of the Holy Spirit. And rather than patiently wait for Jesus to come back and finish that bit of the messianic task, they are to be his witnesses there in Judea over in Samaria, and way to the ends of the earth. 
The gospel account specifies that this witness is to include the proclamation of repentance and forgiveness of sins. This frustrated expectation, along with the abrupt departure of the one who called the disciples together, healed and taught them, was arrested and tried before their eyes, died out of sight of those of them who had run for safety, and talk and ate with them in his resurrected body might well have been cause for grief. But in the story, the disciples worship and rejoice, blessing God in the temple day by day. The really absent Jesus will be really present in new ways and through their witness and hope. Our Evangelical Lutheran Worship, or ELW, offers two prayers for the ascension of our Lord. One stresses the presence of Christ in a new way, as the one who ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things, and then asks for the faith to trust that he abides with us on earth to the end of time. The other, which we prayed today, asks that we might be received along with our prayers and everything into your glory. And those are the two sides of this day, Christ's ascension, his removal from the local presence in the sight of his friends, is precisely what allows him to fill all things and be present to the whole creation and to all people for their preaching, and to make Christ known. And Christ's ascension is what focuses the yearning of his followers to be reunited with him. Jesus is still here, but in a new way. And please come bring us with you. This emotional tension between exhilaration at Christ's new mode of presence And sorrow at Christ's new distance runs through our understanding of the sacraments, our preaching, and maybe even acts of charity and justice. This was true even before we got a year-long lesson in seeing in each other our absence and missing each other in our momentary presence. We believe that Christ is really present by virtue of his promise. And yet everything from the gathering around the altar to the gathering of food for the food bank to the march for justice awaits a final fulfillment where the real absence is made good and the real presence in the proxy of our own ministry becomes all in all. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you.
Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. You call the whole church on earth to worship and bless you. Empower your church to hear joyful witness to your love made known in Jesus Christ. Receive our prayer, O God. Your mercy is great. You have fashioned a habitat for all your creatures, and you fill the earth with your glory. Give rain where it is needed, and rescue those inundated by floods. Mend what we have torn in the fabric of creation, and replenish and nourish your world. Receive our prayer, O God. Your mercy is great. In the majesty of your love, you rule the world with justice and mercy. Give those in authority the spirit of your love, so that all who are hungry and poor receive food and resources, and all people flourish and live in peace. Receive our prayer, O God. Your mercy is great. You heal those who are sick and bound up, bind up the brokenhearted. Attend to the cares and needs of the hurting and hopeless in our congregation, community, workplaces, schools, and families. We especially remember those we name aloud or hold in the quiet of our hearts. Receive our prayer, O God. Your mercy is great. You have gathered us in this congregation, enlightened our hearts, and given us a share of the immeasurable greatness of your power. Help us to love one another. Be reconciled where we are divided, and share the riches of your grace with our neighbors. Receive our prayer, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Would you share that peace with one another?
you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. This is the day that in joy and delight we join with all the angels in heaven and all the creatures of earth to sing our praise and thanksgiving to you all holy and glorious God, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day that you broke the chains of death. This is the day that marrying heaven to earth, you washed away sin, rescued us from evil, and brought us your peace. The Lamb who was slain has begun to reign, for Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. And now I invite you to hold up your piece of bread or cracker. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As one community, let us eat of the bread of life. And now I invite you to hold up your cup of wine or juice. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As one community, let us drink of the cup of salvation. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Bless you now and forevermore. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Go now to follow the way of Jesus. See others as he did. Dare to give freely as he did and to love unconditionally as he did. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.